What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, it is time for us to talk about the Punk Rock Starter Kit. So just in case you're walking down the street sometime and someone says, hey, you look weird. You look like you don't get along with your family. You seem like you probably like punk. Can you tell me where to start? Now, you don't have to ham and haw and get caught off guard. Now, you will know exactly what to tell them. You'll say, well, hey, I'm glad you asked because here, let me send you this video that will tell you exactly how to start with punk rock. And I'm joking, I'm being in tongue in cheek, but in all seriousness, I've decided that I wanna talk about punk and hardcore more because I mean, just it feels weird to say, but the actual fact of the matter is that as far as I'm aware, there's nobody with as big of a quote unquote platform as I have that talks about punk and hardcore. So it's something I want to do a little bit more of because I genuinely do care about it. Like I genuinely do want to spread awareness of, you know, the culture or whatever douchey way you want to put it. So I'm joking here, but I am serious that uh, this is a topic I actually care about. So I'll do my best to give you a punk rock starter kit. Obviously, you know, punk has been around for 40 some years now, so there's no way that I could possibly include everything. So I know that everyone's going to be all up in the comments saying, why didn't you mention this band or that band? Can't possibly mention every band, but what I will try to do is include at least a few of the big ones from kind of what I see as the most important different sort of branches of the punk family tree. So in roughly chronological order, obviously the first place we have to start is with MGK because everybody knows that MGK invented punk, right? So we all know that after MGK invented punk, the next band to check out is one that I'm going to assume that everybody knows, but just in case maybe you have never listened to the Ramones, you should probably check them out because actually they're great. And what's interesting to me about the Ramones is that they're sort of almost pop punk in a sense of what they did is take 50s rock and roll, which back then was thought of as pop. This is just like Jan and Dean or the Beach Boys or something played a little bit faster and louder. Tons of hooks. It's like just legitimately great rock songs any way you want to look at it. I mean, there's a reason, like, you listen to those ooh-ooh kind of, you know, harmonies in the background. That's just like straight-up Beach Boys. This came out in 1976 or something. There's a reason people still listen to this almost 50 years later, and it's because of their first several albums, first, like, 20 years or so of their career, it's just back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back fucking, like, bangers. Their catalog is incredibly good. Short, fast songs, no bullshit, no filler. Just get right into it, play the hook, and then get the fuck out. Great shit. So I think pretty much everybody has heard the Ramones at this point, but just in case you haven't, in case maybe you've just seen people wearing Ramones shirts and you're like, you know, I should listen to that band sometime, but you never got around to it. Now is the time to get around to it because they are legitimately great. Another band that I would suggest you check out is the Sex Pistols. Now, I got to say, I think it's kind of weird that the consensus opinion on the Sex Pistols now is that they suck. I disagree. I think that this album was fucking great. They were the band that definitely popularized punk. They probably weren't the very first punk band, but for most people, they were the first punk band. I think this album came out in 1977, right? They were the band that ended up on the news, largely because of the way they looked. To this day, this is still like the punk look, right? The leather jacket, that destroy shirt, you know, the chains, all that stuff, the spiky hair, the cover of this album with the like cut and paste kind of letters there. So many things that we think of as like synonymous with punk, they really defined. I don't know why the idea now is that the Sex Pistols suck and they weren't important or something like that. I couldn't disagree more. I mean, they were before my time. I wasn't born until 1978, but I think the Sex Pistols were super important, actually brilliant in their own way. Like Johnny Rotten is like a super obnoxious, annoying person with a lot of bad ideas, but he is also brilliant. Um, and I think the album is actually great. I think this is a great rock album. I think this album is no skips. To me personally, I think this is a fucking great album. One of the best rock albums of all time. I don't really understand how you could like punk and not like this, you know? This is a great, like, this is just a legitimately great rock album. 
you can hear how much it influenced like Guns N' Roses, for example, right? Like Appetite for Destruction is super, super, super heavily influenced by this. Yeah, they changed the world. It's true. They changed the world. No question about it. be true same reason people might not like migos or corn hearing them the fact that they're so influential makes them sound generic to some that could be true too um you know either way i would say if you have not ever given the sex pistols a fair shot they only have one real album which is never mind the bullocks there's a bunch of other live stuff and b-sides and blah 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 but if you have never really given that album a listen front to back like on headphones and you want to get into punk you definitely should or even if you have been into punk for a long time and you've never really given it a fair shot you should because the sex pistols are fucking awesome the clash obviously needs to be in there as well uh, i don't really like the clash to be honest with you so i'm gonna skip them but you know go listen to the clash the next group of bands i would say would fall under the category of like early uk kind of stuff a band that a lot of people do not fully appreciate these days is crass and i'll tell you why because crass's music is absolutely awful but kind of on purpose <laughs> i think they started in like 1977 or so like very very early but crass understood that as early as the late 70s that punk had already become kind of bullshit in a lot of ways kind of had become full of a lot of cliches and like tribalist politics and dumb shit like that. So I think from the very beginning, Crass were one step ahead of the scene. And I want you to pay attention to this song. This song is from 1978, I think. And it could be from 2022. This is like some of the best lyrics in punk ever written. This band is musically horrible, but I suggest that you check them out because their lyrics and ideas are still to this day absolutely brilliant crass is maybe the first punk band to sort of define themselves by critiquing punk in a lot of ways so listen to this song pay attention to the lyrics these lyrics are 10 out of 10 brilliant i said that we were trash well the name is crass not clash i can stop it clash diss track this part is so good. Another level lyrically. Absolutely brilliant. This stuff like still gives me chills because the lyrics are so good. I mean, the music is like absolutely atrocious, but on purpose. They were deliberately bad. So based. The most based lyrics of all time. Exactly. It's terrible, but very advanced. That's exactly what Crass is. So I would say, you know, Crass is probably the defining band of, you know, anarcho punk, which would then go on to become crust punk, basically. Really just reject a lot of the dumb dogma. Dogma meaning these sort of like stupid tribalist beliefs and the idea that if you're punk, you have to follow this particular invisible script that says you have have to believe all these things and act in this certain way to me crass like has always been maybe like the strongest voice for saying that punk means really truly thinking for yourself and rejecting all the bullshit that comes along with it rejecting all the like tribalist dogma incredibly incredibly advanced shit i saw someone say this band was basically outsider art and i understand what they mean yeah man they were incredibly advanced the vandals before the vandals that's right crass rejected the aspects of punk that were more about posturing than any real actionable content exactly and that's why crass is absolutely brilliant and again if you're into any sort of political anything you absolutely have to check out crass the founders of i think like anarcho punk and peace punk i would say incredible stuff another band kind of in the same vein not the most popular band in the world but i think when it comes to like early uk punk slash hardcore i would highly suggest that you check out the subhumans i can't really do them justice here because again they're one of these bands that actually has really um intelligent lyrics that you should listen to that's the thing with punk is it's not really just about the music you actually got to listen to and pay attention to the lyrics and subhumans have very good lyrics they also have really good music especially their later stuff where they started to get more influenced by like dub and reggae which you know you guys know that i hate ska punk but dub and reggae a little bit of a different matter and like their second album worlds apart i think is my favorite one but if you wanted to start somewhere 
their first album, The Day the Country Died, from I think 82 or 83, would be the one that I would start with. Great logo, yes. Every punk had this on the back of their jacket. That's right. It is a very underrated album. Not enough people are into subhumans these days. No, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. My mother died of cancer when I was five. Citizen Fish, also great. Uh, that's the singer's other band after Subhumans, Citizen Fish. Very good band. Subhumans are still playing shows, by the way. He's like 65 or something, still out there. Yeah, they are still good live. I watched a video of him researching this. So that's Subhumans. There's plenty of other bands sort of in this cohort. For example, GBH and Exploited. Uh, lots of other bands like that that you could listen to if you want. But... I would say Subhumans, sort of underrated. Another band from this era, I'm not gonna go down the whole well of oi because I think most of that stuff is terrible. That's a whole can of worms that I do not want to open. However, one of the foundational bands of sort of oi and street punk kind of stuff is Coxbar. Um, kind of an unfortunate name, but uh, in terms of like overall songwriting, I would say this band is one of the very best punk bands of all time. Like their catalog is just one banger after the next. They're kind of like the um, punk version of Thin Lizzy or something like that. More of like sort of working class pub rock, I guess you would call it. Ended up getting kind of adopted by a lot of skinheads and people like that. And you can have your opinion of that, whatever you want. I'm not a fan of skinheads or oi or any of that stuff. However, I will say this band has some of the absolute best songwriting of all time. And I apologize to everyone who's expecting me to talk about MXPX uh, and Pennywise and Alkaline Trio or something like that in the starter kit. That's not what you're going to get. This is my gatekeeper moment. What I'm talking about in this starter kit is actual real punk not Anti-Flag and Alkaline Trio, I'm sorry. <laughs> so here it is. This whole album by Cox Bar is fantastic, but this is my favorite song by them. It's called Working. I like anti nowhere anti -Nowhere League, I like. Cockney Rejects are also great. Angelic Upstarts are great. Just It's just so catchy. Yeah, these choruses and shit on this album are so good. I love this band so much. This shit is so good. So you can also check out, if you're into that stuff, check out some other bands like uh, Angelic Upstarts, Cockney Rejects, Anti Nowhere League. That stuff's great. Like that early, like early 80s street punk shit is pretty great if you like that. Moving on to sort of where I believe the next frontier of innovation was in punk. Again, this is before my time. I didn't get into this stuff until like 1990, 91. So this stuff was all over by the time I discovered it. So you'd have to ask somebody older than me what it was like while it was happening. I don't know, but my perception is that the next frontier of innovation uh, in the punk world happened over here in America and I could go on forever. You know, some people might call these bands hardcore, you know, and I think that'd be reasonable, but for the sake of this video, we're going to call them punk. One of the early bands in that genre would have to be the Misfits. You got to include the Misfits in any sort of punk rock starter kit. Obviously the stuff with Michael Graves from the nineties, right? I'm just kidding. I've actually only listened to Michael Graves era Misfits like once I saw them in 96, I think, whenever they first got together. Horrible, horrible stuff. Do not listen to Michael Graves' era Misfits. Only Danzig era Misfits is real. Anything that Danzig did with the Misfits is great, honestly. Like, he's a corny dude, but I don't know whether it was him or Jerry or whoever wrote those songs. Incredible shit. And sort of like the Ramones, like really what they were doing was just like a more like raw, stripped down version of like 50s rock and roll. I assume everybody knows this song, but just in case you don't, this is where Eagles Dare by the Misfits. They could barely play, the production is horrible, but the songwriting is so good, even though it sounds like just absolute trash, it's so catchy. I remember how hard I laughed the first time I heard this. One of, yeah, it makes me want to skate behind a 7-Eleven, exactly. Yeah, I actually like the shitty recordings. I think that there's a lot of charm there. If this was like a slick major label recording, I think it would take all the like energy out of it, you know? 
you know, obviously the other part of the Misfits that, uh, I don't know, I should probably make a video about the Misfits, but in addition to their songs being so good, a huge part of why they were so great was the aesthetic, the horror imagery and the art. I mean, like to this day, the stuff they did like uh, Earth AD has some of the best album art of all time by Mark Rude, just like incredible. Like I had this on vinyl and um, I would just like pour over this like, you know, dot by dot. The aesthetic, the songs, just Misfits, great band. The, the entire dancing catalog, no skips. Another band to check out would be Dead Kennedys. Um, I have a lot of criticisms of Dead Kennedys, specifically that I think Jello is like kind of a shrill, off-putting, like pretentious kind of person. However, at the same time, I will also say that he has his moments where he is brilliant. One of the people that after crass, I would say is uh, one of the best punks critiquing punks. You can check out their whole catalog. I would say their first couple albums are worth listening to. Give Me Convenience or Give Me Death is probably overall their best album musically. This has some of the best lyrics. I don't really think this is musically their best song. This is like my favorite Dead Kennedy song musically. He is a good guitarist, yeah. One of the issues with Dead Kennedys is that uh, Jello's vocals are really bad. He sounds like a John Waters character. Like, he's a horrible vocalist. The band is very good, but his vocals are just awful. Yeah, he sounds like the guy from the B-52s, exactly. Yeah, his vocals are a little bit rough. But this song has some of the best lyrics of any punk song ever. These are a lot of the same reasons. Like when people ask me, how come I don't talk about punk now? Or like, you know, I talk about new punk artists and stuff. It's because of the things that they talk about in this song. I think punk now is mostly bullshit. I think punk now is mostly a bunch of chicken shit conformists who are more interested in following this script of you know, what they believe it means to like be a quote unquote punk, which means just emulating what other people did in 1981 instead of actually doing something different and interesting. Obviously, I love punk, but I'm not going to listen to some fucking band in 2022 that's just copying something TSOL or whatever did in 1980. You know what I mean? All that's left is just a meaningless fad. It's truth. Really great lyrics. This is one of the most disappointing things to me is that when I do talk about new artists, so many of the people in the comments are like, oh, this sucks, this is garbage. Like, how come it doesn't sound like some other band from 20 years ago? For example, when you talk about, like, hyperpop or something like that, which to me, like, hyperpop is so clearly congruent with punk, especially because, like, early punk, say, like, especially, like, the Hollywood scene was basically, like, weird, queer, arty people just making this bizarre music that nobody else understood or cared about. So to see so-called punks reject hyperpop that is so clearly the successor to what bands like the weirdos were doing in 1978 is so disappointing to me and it just makes me it kind of makes me hate punk how like closed-minded and fucking ignorant and dogmatic and backwards so many punks are now makes me kind of hate punk so although i don't necessarily love a lot of the dead kennedy's music when they're on, they're on. And Jello, you know, he said a lot of dumb, irritating shit, but he said a lot of really smart shit too. So moving on from that uh, would be the early 80s Orange County yeah, sound. Can... It's kind of unfortunate how little people appreciate this sound now because I would argue that this flavor of punk is the one that probably ended up being the most influential and the most popular, but nobody really appreciates Orange County punk or Orange County hardcore as they called it back then. You know, Social Distortion, obviously the big one there, TSOL, another big one. But one band that is underappreciated in this scene is DI, specifically their guitarist, Rick Agnew, who is a huge, huge part of this sound. Johnny's got a problem and he's out of control. 
he really create. He wrote a lot of these songs. He laid the foundation for a lot of this sound. He was in Social Distortion also. He was also in The Adolescence and Christian Death, yeah. Rick Agnew, very underrated piece of punk history. This is my favorite D.I. song. I'm a D.I. stan. I love this band. Listen to how much D.I. you can hear in Avenged Sevenfold, for example. I mean, Avenged Sevenfold from Huntington Beach, which was like ground zero for all this stuff. And you can hear how much of this is in Avenged Sevenfold. This is a later DI song, but I, I think it's great. Listen to how much this sounds like Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like the Beast and the Harlot, exactly. This part is so Avenged Sevenfold right here. This is like straight up City of Evil. So if you're into this sound, anything that Casey Royer or Rick Agnew has been in, I would say it's worth checking out. And uh, definitely, definitely don't sleep on that early Orange County stuff. Another band that most of you guys probably know, but has to be mentioned here uh, in this conversation is Descendants. When you think about pop punk, Descendants, without a doubt, are the band that really defined pop punk as we know it. Um, yes, they are kind of in cell. There's, there's some legitimate critiques to be made of their lyrics. But in terms of just this overall sound, in my opinion, this shit really holds up. This is from 1990, and at least to me, this shit still holds up. Definitely the template for modern pop punk. This is Coolidge by Descendants from their album All. Blink would tell you that they were essentially just doing their version of the Descendants. Obviously, Descendants just copied MGK. We all know that. MGK invented punk, then the Descendants just copied him. But they did a good job. Like, listen to the phrasing on the guitar. Stefan Egerton, very underrated, great guitarist. Carl Alvarez, listen to that bass line and you can hear how much like pop punk bassists rip off Carl Alvarez. Yeah, Bill Stevenson, fantastic drummer. I would suggest checking out the entire discography of The Descendants, at least the early stuff. The later stuff, I know a lot of people like it, but I don't think it's great. I think their later stuff all kind of sounds the same. But check out their early discography. Very, very important part of punk. Another important branch. I don't like this stuff. Um, but for those of you who want to get into punk and explore all the different branches, we have to talk about crust punk and anarcho punk. That's a whole branch. You know, there's bands like Doom and Amoebix and all kinds of other stuff like that that I don't like. However, as far as this stuff goes, I would say Nausea, one of the best bands to do this style. This band's from New York City. I think this is from like 1989 or 90. I don't love this style, but I think they did it as well as anybody. You can hear how it's, you know, kind of metallic. It's like Discharge meets metal. That is a girl singing, in case you aren't aware. That might be why the vocals sound shrill to you. Amy from Nausea. I am not a huge fan of this style, but again, respect to Nausea. Um, one of the best bands in this kind of genre. So if you want to check them out, uh, do that. Doom is another one I might recommend. Hell Bastard were pretty good. I don't know. There's a whole, a whole line of bands who sound like that. Now, we have to talk, of course, about ska punk, ska core. I'm not a fan of this stuff. However, there is one band or really just one person that did it very well, and that is Operation Ivy, which is, for those who don't know, Rancid uh, was the band that blew up in the 90s, of course. But Operation Ivy was sort of like the, the precursor to Rancid. Tim Armstrong played guitar in this band and wrote most of the songs. He went by Lint back then. Matt Freeman from Rancid also played bass in Operation Ivy. In my opinion, they were by far the best band to ever do like ska core. Not all the Operation Ivy songs sound ska influenced, but of the ska songs by Operation Ivy, I would say this might be my favorite one. 
Really incredible songwriting. This album is called Energy, which contains almost everything they ever wrote. No skips. This album is a 10. Every song on this album is fucking great. Extremely catchy, great songwriting. And they were like 17 or 18 when they did this too. That's how good of a songwriter uh, Tim Armstrong is. I love that guitar tone too. It's so shitty, but it works. It's so like shrill, but great. This is sort of an obscure Operation Ivy song, but it's my favorite one. It's not ska, but if you are into Operation Ivy and you haven't heard this song, there's a um, maybe a handful, like five or six songs that didn't make it to the album that are worth checking out. This is my favorite Operation Ivy song called Plea for Peace. Love that snare and the cowbell. I don't know why this didn't make it to the album because it's great. Yeah, Hedgecore is good too. If you think that ska core or ska punk is bad, you would be right. But Operation Ivy and Rancid, fantastic. The next sort of wave of bands that I think are worth talking about would be skate punk, which ended up being the most influential branch of 90s punk. Uh, kind of interesting because, you know, there's so many different flavors of punk. I don't think anyone would have expected that this is the one that would end up being the most popular, but it was. The most important band in this genre by far is definitely Bad Religion. They're the ones who laid the template for all of this, especially this album Suffer, which is from 1988. Um, this is the one that I think really perfected this sound. And if you haven't checked it out, like, I mean, I think everyone knows Bad Religion, but if you've heard one Bad Religion song, you've kind of heard, heard them all as the thing. They do kind of all sound the same, but this album is pretty great. You've heard this sound so much that like it probably doesn't sound different or special to you. This is the Bad Religion sound. Every band that plays this style is copying Bad Religion, period. The band that ended up, I would say, kind of almost popularizing it more than Bad Religion in a way is No Effects. And if you doubt that No Effects was essentially copying Bad Religion, they have a song called I am a huge fan of bad religion <laughs> with the lyrics. I am a huge fan of bad religion. I have even bought a brown fender precision like the one Jay plays. Signing to Atlantic was a really bad decision. Now they're back on Epitaph. Hey, I bought Suffer. Then I bought a thesaurus. Then Graffin sang on S&M Airlines chorus. Now we hang out and party in each other's tour bus because the old bands know how to have fun. So in case you doubted, the very, very direct straight line between No Effects and Bad Religion. There it is. And if for some reason you haven't heard No Effects, well, I think their whole discography is pretty damn good. But if you wanted to start with something, I would say Punk and Drublick is probably the album. Uh, Linoleum, probably their definitive song. You can really hear how they just sort of like, you know, were iterating on the Bad Religion formula. You know, they did have their own spin on it. Much more kind of funny, sarcastic lyrics. This album still sounds so good. This is from what, 94? This still sounds so fucking good. What a great recording. Of course, as everyone probably knows, Fat Mike also started Fat Records, which was by far the most popular punk label of the 90s, um, put out millions and millions of other bands that you guys probably all know about. That is where I will end the punk rock starter kit, because in my personal opinion, the skate punk thing of the early to mid 90s was kind of the last interesting thing in like these straight up punk scene. Lots of interesting things happening in hardcore and genres that are sort of related to punk. There's a lot of like punk adjacent things that were very interesting. But in my opinion, after skate punk, there really is nothing in the like quote unquote real punk scene that was new. After this, to me, everything in punk has been a version of something that I just talked about. It's all just sort of revival stuff. And that's not me putting it down. That's cool. If you like the new bands that sound like Nausea or Dead Kennedys or DI, that's totally fine. But for me, there's no reason why I would ever choose to listen to a band that sounds like a less good version of, you know, TSOL 
or subhumans when I could just listen to TSOL or subhumans. Hardcore is a whole other thing. I did another starter kit on hardcore. So if you're interested in that, you can go watch that video. But that is where I would sort of end the punk rock starter kit. And I agree with the chat. Every genre gets tapped out at some point. That's exactly what it is. You know, you can't keep innovating forever, whether it's blues or jazz or R&B or whatever, like every genre sort of reaches its final form at some point. And I would say punk probably did that in the early to mid nineties. And after that, the innovation has been elsewhere. But with that said, now you have all the tools you need. If anybody ever comes along and says, hey, you look like a weird, dysfunctional person that doesn't get along with your parents. Can you tell me where to start with punk rock? Now you can say, yes, yes, I can. Here it is. And you will send them a link to this video. So there we go. Join us for another starter kit next time.